Hello students, welcome to e Shala. I am Dr. Vasanti, Professor and Head, Department of Biotechnology, Kamaraj College of Engineering and Technology, Virdhanagar. In today's module, we are going to see about enzyme classification and metabolism. For all practical purposes, enzyme classification need to be of two order. One is the systematic nomenclature, another one common or trivial nomenclature. Great thought has been given to give a specific nomenclature to enzymes which are the biological catalyst of the biochemical reactions. Enzymes in fact carry over most of the reactions, biochemical reactions of the body. The objective of the module is to understand the mechanism of enzyme regulation in biological processes, describe the enzymes and its properties that facilitate their actions, identify the major classes of enzymes and the reaction catalyzed by each class and explain the mechanism and kinetics of enzyme catalyzed reaction. Enzymes are protein catalysts and control the rates of chemical reactions. They are of great specificity which means an enzyme is very specific to a very particular reaction. Enzymes increase the rate of the reaction by lowering the energy of activation which is required for the smooth conduct of a biochemical reaction. Catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of chemical reaction without itself being permanently altered. So the reacting molecules are called the substrates and the substances which are formed as a result of the enzymatic action on the substrate are called the products. The enzyme has a specific site called the active site which is made up of a specific set of amino acids of a protein to which the substrate binds and thereby exhibiting the reaction. Let us understand how an enzyme works. An enzyme works by binding with its substrate the molecule whose reaction is catalyzed. The active site is the location on the enzyme where the substrate fits. So here we have the enzyme plus the substrate giving the enzyme substrate complex and you can see the spot exactly where the substrate which is red in color binds to the entire enzyme in a specific pocket and that pocket is called the active site. Before we know about the classification of enzyme, let us know in detail the structure of the enzyme. Some enzymes require non-protein molecules for their activity. Such conjugated proteins are called as oloenzyme. The enzyme structure, based on the structure it can be classified, they are simple enzymes where only the protein part is there. However, there are also complex enzymes which are also called as oloenzymes where there is a protein part as well as the non-protein part which is generally called the cofactor. So this is called the oloenzyme where we have the apoenzyme, the protein part plus a cofactor and the cofactor in itself can be a coenzyme. The enzyme without the non-protein part is inactive and hence it is called as an apoenzyme and not a full enzyme. The cofactors required as an additional component for to make it a holoenzyme can either be inorganic in nature or an organic compound. So we have two types of cofactors, either it is a coenzyme or it is a prosthetic group. The coenzyme are large organic molecules which are loosely bound to the apoenzyme whereas the prosthetic groups are usually small inorganic molecules or atoms and they are usually tightly bound to the apoenzyme. So there is a difference between the coenzyme and the prosthetic enzyme which are cofactors which are added to an apoenzyme to make it a holoenzyme. The non-protein component which is loosely bound to an apoenzyme is generally by a non-covalent bond and some of the notable examples of coenzymes are the vitamins or compound derived from vitamins like FAD, flavin adenine dinucleotide, flavin mononucleotide, nucleotide adenine dinucleotide and the prosthetic group 
the non protein component are generally tightly bound to the apo enzyme by covalent bonds and this is called as a prosthetic group now that we have understood the structure of the enzyme let us understand the nomenclature of the enzyme iubmb has recommended system of nomenclature for enzymes and according to them each enzyme as i already told you is assigned with two names one is called the trivial name as generally we all have pet names common names not our usual full name or the given name that is called trivial name common name recommended name and another one which is called as the systemic name which is also called as the official name of the enzyme let's see in detail about it each enzyme is characterized by a code number called enzyme code number or ec number and contain a four figure digits which are separated by a dot for example ec enzyme classification m dot n dot o dot p the first digit represents the class to which the enzyme begins we will be talking in detail about the different classes of enzyme shortly the second digit stands for the sub class the third digit stands for the sub sub class or the sub group and the fourth digit gives the serial number of that particular enzyme let us take a common enzyme the gly the first enzyme of the glycolytic cycle the hexokinase the ec number is 2.7.1.1 according to the international union for biochemistry and molecular biology system of enzyme nomenclature enzymes are broadly classified into six major classes the first one ec1 is called oxidoreductases wherein they catalyze a type of reaction called oxidation reduction reaction the second class ec2 is called transferases where the enzymes transfer a particular functional group ec3 are called hydrolases which is called hydrolysis reaction mediating enzyme ec4 are called lyases wherein they involve in the group elimination to form a double bond they are involved in joining of the molecules and ec5 they are isomerases wherein they are responsible for isomerization reactions conversion of one isoform isomer forming to another isomeric form and the last one ec6 or ligases and they are responsible for bond formation and it is usually coupled with atp hydrolysis let us now see in detail about the oxidoreductases oxidoreductases catalyze oxidation reduction reactions between two substrates they catalyze the transfer of hydrogen or oxygen atoms or electrons from one substrate to another the substrate donates one or more electrons to an electron acceptor thereby becoming oxidized in the process it is also known as oxidases dehydrogenases or reductases in the given example you can see catechol gets an oxygen group in the present by the mediated by catechol oxidases and they become benzoquinone liberating hydrogen so an oxygenation takes place these some of the properties of oxidoreductases are they act as oxidases whereby bringing intramolecular oxygen is the hydrogen or electron acceptor peroxidases reduction of hydrogen peroxide and organic hydroperoxide they can be reductases by catalyzing reduction reaction they can be oxygenases wherein they incorporate intramolecular oxygen into organic substrates or they can be dehydrogenases wherein an oxidized substrate by transforming one or more hydride ion please understand carefully the difference between oxidases and oxygenases where in an oxidase 
the intramolecular oxygen is the hydrogen or electron acceptor whereas in an oxygenase the incorporation of intramolecular oxygen is from inorganic substrates and not into an another organic form now transferases the second group they catalyze group transfer reactions and the transferring group could be anything it could be an acetyl molecule a methyl group a phosphate group or anything excluding the oxidoreductases which transfer are hydrogen or oxygen so transferases are involved in the transfer of other groups than hydrogen or oxygen and hence they are called as transferases and the chemical group is transferred from one donor substrate to an acceptor substrate some of the common names of enzymes belonging to this classification group include acetyl transferase methylases protein kinases which are involved in the transfer of phosphate group from atp and the polymerases the third group enzyme is called hydrolases which catalyze the hydrolysis of various bonds where water is the acceptor of the transferred group this class of enzyme includes the lipases the esterases the nitrolases the peptidases or the proteases these enzymes catalyze the hydrolytic cleavage of bonds such as the co bond cn cc and some other bonds including a phosphoric and hydride bonds a very important class of enzyme and here in the example i've shown you the example of nucleotide hydrolases which bring in the degradation of adenosine into adenine in ribose the next category is called lyases which catalyze the non hydrolytic removal of functional groups from substrates they cleave various bonds by means other than the hydrolysis and oxidation i would like you to keep track of the difference between every enzymatic reaction in hydrolysis the water is an acceptor and in oxidation processes one of the component is an electron donor and an electron acceptor whereas in lyases they catalyze the non hydrolytic that is without water removal of functional groups from substrates they are in responsible for the addition of functional groups across a double bond add water ammonia or carbon dioxide across the double bonds or they remove these elements to produce double bonds the fifth class is called as the isomerases which catalyze isomerization reactions within a single molecule here one substrate gets converted into one product of course there are different kinds of isomerizations like racemizations cis trans isomerizations and mutase reactions here i have shown a conversion of maleate into fumarate by maleate isomerase the last group of enzyme are ligases which catalyze ligation which means joining of two substrate this class of enzyme require chemical energy in the form of atp so here and i've shown pyruvate in the presence of carbon dioxide atp and water gives rise to oxaloacetate in the process atp getting converted to adp now that we have understood the different classes of enzymes we need to know the metabolism of enzyme or enzyme catalyzed to reaction let me introduce to you a very important concept called activation energy a progress of the reaction is shown on the horizontal axis and the free energy the delta g is shown on the vertical axis the transition state of the reaction which is represented as a b c is the point of the highest energy the free energy difference between the reactant and the transition state is the free energy of activation what do enzymes exactly do they bring down the activation energy required for a substrate when it is getting converted into a product what would happen without the enzyme the substrate would have to spend a lot of energy for its conversion into a particular type of product that is why we call enzyme catalyzed reaction have the lowest activation energy where the activation energy is brought down by the presence of the enzyme let me explain it to you with an analogy there is an uphill task we trying to move a ball 
by your hand from a higher point in a mountain as long as we take it to the mountain top we need to spend a lot of energy imagine if there is somebody to lift us and then put us directly onto the mountain top then the downfall of the ball would be very very easy enzymes do exactly the role of lifting us up onto the mountain top thereby lessening or lowering the activation energy required for the substrate when it gets converted to a particular product there are two types of reactions in metabolism one is called the exergonic reaction the energy releasing processes ones that is which reactions which generate energy are termed as exergonic reactions reactions that require energy to initiate the reactions are known as endergonic reactions let me make it very clear reactions in which energy is released or energy is generated they are termed as exergonic reactions and reactions which require energy to initiate or to start the reaction are called as endergonic reaction all natural processes tend to proceed in such a direction that the disorder or randomness of the universe increases this is what the thermodynamic second law also states that the universe is moving towards randomness delta s which we call as entropy in an exergonic reaction the change is free energy is represented by a negative number called minus delta g indicating that the free energy is released during the reaction i underline let us not get confused by the negative symbol if the negative symbol only indicates that energy is being released out of the system so there is removal of the energy during the process from the system exergonic reactions are spontaneous they are energy releasing just check when the reactants move towards the product there is a sizable amount of energy that is released which is indicated by the increase in the free energy this kind of reaction is called as exergonic reaction endergonic reactions on the other hand they are not spontaneous in nature because in order to go from the initial state to the final state these reactions require a considerable amount of energy from the system outside they need energy they require energy so these kind of reactions are always associated with a positive number plus delta g look at the picture here we'll be able to understand it better as the reaction product as the substrate moves from the initial state to the final state it is a very difficult task it requires additional energy from the system thereby increasing the requirement of the free energy and that is why it is called plus delta g only when the energy is given to the system the substrate can get converted to a product there is an importance of an additional energy currency molecule in coupling the exergonic and the endergonic reactions the endergonic reactions require energy to proceed coupling an energy requiring reaction with an energy yielding reaction can drive an endergonic reactions you must be wondering how the exergonic and the endergonic reactions are coupled that's the beauty of nature i already told you the exergonic reactions give away energy the endergonic reactions require energy don't we think that it was quite natural for nature to couple these two reactions so that the one the inner reaction which gives energy can the energy released can be utilized by the reaction which requires it but however there has to be a molecule in between to orchestrate to coordinate the transfer of energy the release of energy capture of it and the transfer of it and atp adenosine triphosphate is the most common intermediate in such kind of coupled reactions a coupled reaction is a system of two reactions linked by an energy shuttle called atp 
substrate B is a fuel like glucose or lipid and ATP is not a storehouse of energy it is used as soon as it is available in substrate A when it gets converted to product A in the presence of enzyme A that requires energy so where did that energy come from another reaction where substrate B was getting converted to product B in the presence of enzyme B there was an energy release and that ATP conversion released an energy which is used by the endergonic reaction so one end reaction releases energy that energy is utilized by the endergonic reaction these are both mediated by respective enzyme and ATP acts as a shuttle molecule transferring the energy from one enzyme catalyzed reaction to another enzyme catalyzed reaction to know more about the metabolism of enzyme I need to introduce to you a terminology called enzyme kinetics kinetics is the study of reaction rates study of enzyme kinetics is useful for measuring the concentration of an enzyme in a mixture by its catalytic activity its purity which is called the specific activity its catalytic efficiency and or specificity for different substrates let me tell you when I mean purity each enzyme is very very specific for its given substrate however a given enzyme can also act on other substrates but not at the same efficiency level so comparison of different forms of the same enzyme in different tissue or organisms help us in understanding the diseases and it also gives us another understanding of the effects of inhibitors which can give us information about the catalytic mechanism the structure of the active site whereby we can effectively explore or exploit the inhibitors as potential therapeutic agents to slow down a particular enzyme reaction thereby slowing the rate of a particular metabolic reaction which is very faster in a given disease condition enzyme inhibitors or of molecules that deactivate enzyme activity either temporarily or permanently there are variety of inhibitors which are being classified to be more specific enzyme inhibitors can be classified as specific inhibitors or non specific inhibitors under the specific inhibitors we have got two classes called reversible inhibitor and irreversible inhibitor and under reversible inhibitor we have got two types competitive inhibitor and non competitive inhibitor another form of enzyme inhibition is also called as uncompetitive inhibitor we will see about them later now under the non specific we talk about agents which generally bring about denaturation of the enzymes like the difference in the pH which are brought about the, the acidic and the basic nature of the medium or the system in which the enzyme operates the external temperature the presence of alcohol the presence of cofactors like heavy metals and other reducing agents poisons and drugs are some of the examples of enzyme inhibitors let us see about competitive inhibitors a very simple they deactivate the enzyme they compete with the substrate molecule to bind with the active site of the enzyme the normal reaction is called e the enzyme trying with its substrate giving an enzyme substrate complex which breaks down to give the product and liberates back the enzyme however whenever there is a competitive inhibitor instead of s binding to the enzyme that is a substrate binding to the enzyme we have the inhibitor binding to the enzyme and instead of the enzyme substrate complex we have the enzyme inhibitor complex and the substrate cannot have any reaction the examples are antibiotics the next class is called the non competitive inhibitor they deactivate the enzyme by binding to another part of the enzyme and not the active site so they essentially do not compete with the substrate but rather they bring about a conformational change in the enzyme again thereby preventing the substrate from binding to the active site so they don't compete with the substrate they bind to a different part of the enzyme but because of this binding of the inhibitor there is a structural alteration in the structure of the enzyme 
and no longer the substrate can bind to the enzyme. The last part of an enzyme inhibitor is called the allosteric enzyme inhibitor. They bind to a part of the enzyme away from the active site which is usually called the allosteric site. If the inhibition is at a place which is remote from the active site then this is called as allosteric inhibition. The interaction of an inhibitor at an allosteric site changes the structure of the enzyme so that the active site is also changed. There is a conformational change as I described earlier and no longer the substrate can bind to the enzyme because the conformational change happened in the enzyme induces to the loss of the active site. The concluding remark of this unit is we have tried to understand the nomenclature of enzyme, the classification of enzyme and the metabolism of enzyme wherein we know the two enzyme coupled reactions are favored in biological system where an endergonic reaction is always coupled to the exergonic reaction mediated by two different enzymes. One enzyme mediating an exergonic reaction and another enzyme mediating the endergonic reaction. So classification of enzyme and the metabolism of enzyme are being understood in this particular module.